Hey, how's it going? Hey guys, what's going on? Well, look at you. Well, look at you. Look at you. Well, you're a big boy, aren't you? Thanks for the support, man. I appreciate it. Is it a little lonely over here? Look at you. You're throwing a lot of shade these days. We may have to do some pruning here, okay? Doesn't make you look fat at all. Hello, minders. Welcome back to the Mind of Watercolor. Well, we're going to talk about getting to know trees a little better. In specifics, we're going to talk about simplifying. And if you're interested in landscape at all, you already know what a challenge foliage is. Tree foliage, underbrush foliage, it's chaotic, it's complex. And all that's really required for this is to find a tree with some boughs. Uh, preferably that have dark surroundings, something you can isolate. This is, by the way, a great exercise you can do plein air if you're so inclined. I'm not going to do that today. We're going to do this with uh, photos, but I want to show you the kind of things you're looking for. This tree here, which is a hemlock tree, is a perfect example. You have several nice bow examples that are surrounded by some dark uh, negative space. So I'm going to take a picture of that. Here's another great example. We got some nice close ups of some boughs with leaves, and it's surrounded by some fairly uh, dark, contrasty area, so we can isolate them. Here's a great example with some uh, cypress boughs. Nicely isolated against the dark background. These will make some interesting shape studies right here. And what this is is an exercise and seeing. So let's head inside. All right, well, some of those photos that I took, we're gonna start out looking at those and I'm gonna put them in Procreate. Now this is for demonstration purposes. You don't need Procreate, okay? This just makes it easier for me to show you what uh, I'm talking about. And I am gonna take this photo, cut the opacity way back, then create another layer. So what you're doing when you look at these boughs, what you're trying to focus on are the outer shapes. So we have a bough cluster here. We have one here. You know, you see several. A tree, of course, is made up of several of these. This is what I want you to look at. I'm just real roughly drawing those. It's as simple as that. That's what you're looking for. And, and we'll get into, when we actually do a couple examples, we'll get into painting and drawing uh, a few details. But in broad terms, that's what you want. That's what you're looking for. That's what you're studying. Now, I'm tracing, but of course, I, I would urge you to probably draw this, draw from what you see. And, I, and you don't have to exactly match the dimensions and the scale of what you see. Now, when you look at the internal shapes, you're, uh, you're looking uh, at negative shapes. So that'll be the next thing you'll focus on, is a few of these. And you don't have to draw those in great detail or a lot of them. And you can see I'm not doing exactly what I see. All right, let's look at another one. Now, here's a nice photo of a hickory tree. And here we can see a little bit more detail distinctly. But what you want to do is the same thing. So let me take the opacity way back here, and same deal. You're looking for these shapes, and you don't have to draw in every little point and divot. In fact, uh, in this study, I recommend that you don't. So we may end up with something like that. Then secondarily, look for some of those interior negative shapes. But at this point, do not go drawing any leaves. Look for a few negative shapes that you can pull out. Remember, this is a seeing exercise, and you'll end up with something that looks like that. Now, if we get to the detail stage, uh, maybe you want to take some of these outer shapes and come interiorly with a line. Maybe just occasionally put in a leaf shape maybe outside, and you can transpose shapes. You know, you see a leaf shape somewhere and you say, oh, that'll look good right there. You know, get used to thinking in terms of moving stuff around. 
take one of these outlines and just sort of bring it in, you know, to kind of suggest. And so then you'll end up with something more like this. All right, I think you get the point. Let's go to real paint. And just to reiterate, you don't need an iPad for this. You don't need software. You know, you don't need to get all that just for this. If you already have it, great. And you want to learn something like Procreate, great. But you don't need that. Uh, you could just make prints of your photos and use tracing paper if you want to do the tracing exercise. But let's go to what I really want to show you. All right, I'm in my perfect sketchbook. Uh, this is Fabriano Artistico paper, 140 pound cold press. This is the natural white. Now I'm going to draw, you could literally do this any way you want. If you wanted to draw actually with paint and use a water brush, you could do that. You could use a pencil, colored pencil, fountain pen. I just grabbed this zebra brush pen. So I'm going to use that. A Pigma Micron. Anything you want. I do suggest if you've never done this before that you start out by drawing. You know, a drawing instrument like a like a pen. You're actually drawing no matter what you do, whether painting or not. But uh, it might be easier to start out with a drawing instrument like a pen or pencil. And I am not at all concerned about copying these bows exactly. Uh, I'm just going to generally look at them and get an idea of the shapes that I want. Okay. This is a hemlock tree, so it's sort of a, a spruce fir-like tree. And it's got long, slender boughs with needles. Uh, in this case, they're, they're all sort of blending together. And these shapes end up looking a bit like uh, kind of funky umbrellas. So on top, since the boughs come down, you get these umbrella-like shapes. One of the things I'm doing is I'm paying close attention to this negative space or the negative spaces around this. And I'm looking at those shapes rather than the shape of the bow itself. Okay, what I might do then additionally, and this is where we get into adding some details, uh, but we're still limiting the details, is I might bring in some of these where they indicate a bow shape. And I might pick out uh, a negative shape or two. It's interesting because most of them are, look like little shards of something, those kind of shapes. And I just find a couple of shapes, may not even be in the same place or the same bow that I'm copying. And then I try to just put them where compositionally they look interesting. It's kind of a feeling, and uh, sometimes it's hard to describe, but um, it's outer shapes, paying careful attention to the negative space around it, bringing some of those outer lines in a little bit, and then a few interior negative shapes. And then it's sort of the final thing when I do a, a shape study like this is I'll bring in a few loose leaves, and you'll see, or boughs, so you'll see those hanging out here and again don't don't be a slave to one particular spot look around and say oh uh, i'd like to put that one here or that one just around my study make them simple and don't do too many now i'm just gonna paint it i'm keeping it loose i'm not worrying about coloring in you might paint in a few areas more than others i'm gonna get some paint on all of those negative shapes and that appears to add a little more detail the point is ultimately is to see these shapes be able to see these shapes more easily and be able to translate in your mind you know more complex shapes uh in foliage canopies Something that's a little bit more stylized and simplified. And then I just play with it, you know. I look for maybe a secondary layer. You feel like it needs to be darkened, and darken it. Just leave yourself some, some highlight spots.
this point, I'm just kind of playing it by ear. Maybe I'll just try to join some of these areas. It was looking a little bit too complex already. Felt like I was may maybe starting to overwork it a bit. So I'll just try kind of unify the shapes a bit. This is a study. So even as you're painting it, uh, you're studying how the shapes work together. And you're studying the photo, you're studying the, the bits of contrast that the various leaves and boughs make. That, to me, is where the simplification value comes in. All right, let's do another one. This time I'm going to do this hickory tree. We've got a lot of nice, interesting leaf shapes here. But again, think about outer shape, negative space around uh, the bough you're studying, or the foliage you're studying, a few internal negative shapes and then hinting at some of those leaves. I've mixed up a uh, nice yellow green here, gold green, and I'm gonna just draw with my brush this time. The advantage to drawing with your brush is that you can do these leaf shapes and then just sort of grow your shape without uh, drawing the outer shape. <laughs> I do recommend you try that though, uh, drawing that outer shape with a drawing instrument. So it'll just help you see and study that outline. But in this way, at least you can draw the leaf shape and just sort of fill in. So you're working a little more in the positive. Connect and simplify. Connect and simplify. This gets to be really fun. And again, the goal is just to train your eye to see maybe differently than what you're used to seeing or how you're used to seeing it. And as you look at trees that are bigger, you know, and you're you're not able to see all the individual leaves as well. I'm pretty zoomed in on on some bow shapes here. But you'll see uh, the same sort of shapes, but just, again, more simplified and connected. And you just want to observe characteristics that you can define. Like uh, I was talking about up here on these boughs, the tops, the, the leaves tend to point down. Now, that may not be true of every tree, but in this case, in this hickory tree, that's what they do. So uh, the tops make these sort of rounded m umbrella shapes and mounds. Okay, that's a pretty good study of some of the leaves I see. Now I'm gonna look for, let me get, uh, darken this a bit. Look for an, a few internal negative shapes. Maybe I'll continue the edge of a leaf or two, and it's just a different method of doing what we did up here with line. And you don't need many. The key to me is um, maximum recognizability and detail, render detail with minimal strokes. All right, I'm going to stop right there. I think that looks good. At least it accomplishes uh, the study goal that I was going for. All right, let's do one more. This time we're gonna look at this. Uh, this is a uh, Leland Cypress tree and it's got some spiky shapes. So I'm gonna go back to using a pen and we're gonna focus on that sort of spindly spiky look. But again, remembering that you're going to draw and pay a lot of attention to the negative outline or the space outside the shape you're drawing. So you don't need to draw every jagged spindly line. So we're going to do it like this. Mainly going to draw the major like spikes the way the needles point out. I'm going to go ahead and draw a couple of overlapping shapes. When you do this, spend more time looking at your subject than you do putting the line on the paper. 
Sometimes you can draw separate shapes like this and then join them later. I kind of picked a, a bow in the center of that bow that I was looking at, so I don't have a good top edge to look at. And it's going to kind of overlap this image. I don't care. All right. That's a pretty good shape to start with. And I didn't do just the outline like I showed you up here. Concept is the same. You you get a major outline or shape. The, the point is that you study that outer shape or some outer shape. And you bring some of these lines interiorly. And then you can go back and internalize some of these outlines. Let's give that feel that spiky feel then I, I look for a few outer shapes and you can find a few inner negative shapes got a since i did a major overlap here i don't need many but have them keep the same character and there we go i think that's about enough now i've mixed up a, a sort of a grayer green uh please do not focus on the color here. The, the color here is not important. Um, just green. Get a green. Um, this time I'm going to sort of hint at these shadows. I'm going to go in and fill these negative spaces first. Maybe catch some of the shadows under the overlaps. Again, just some quick um, bits of color, hinting maybe at shadows in the overlaps, definitely in the little negative spaces, connecting uh, what you can, leaving yourself some highlights. But, I mean, in reality, uh, the rendering, the final rendering is not the goal, the issue. It's to study these shapes. You get into an actual painting and you can spend more time doing blends and getting your shadows nice and believable, things like that. But I just want a simple representation here of the character of that bow using the most simplified way I can to express it. That's my goal. And if beyond that, you want to add a ton of detail? Well, then that's up to you. But I think it's important to get the essence first before you start worrying about the detail. That helps you with your values. That helps you uh, to see bigger shapes. Seeing bigger shapes is such an important skill to develop. And that's what I'm trying to teach you in this exercise. So work at it. Have fun with it. You know, if one doesn't work, try it again. Do it a little differently. Train yourself to see bigger shapes. And here's another video that might help you as you're learning to paint and draw trees and leaves. Thanks, everyone. Appreciate you watching. Thank you, patrons, for your support. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.